Hi, I'm Jukon from Golf Digest Singapore and here we are today with Gene Saunders of Tatlis Southeast Asia. How are you doing, Gene? Doing well. Doing well. Um, Thanks if you can just tell us a little bit about uh, your role at uh, Tatlis Southeast Asia. Yeah, so my role is club fitting manager for okay. Southeast Asia, uh, looking after the club fitting program and, and uh, fitting throughout the region. Okay, fantastic. Um, 915s, exciting new product range has come, just come out um, from Tatlis. Tell us a little bit about the uh, of the clubs. Yeah, extremely exciting for us. Um, you know, whenever we release a new product, we're always very excited about it, and, and this one I think is no different. Um, what we're looking at here is you know trying to optimize the performance, the total performance for the players. So with this, we've been able to up our speed in, in ball speed, been able to lower the speed, uh, increase the launch, but maintain our MOI. So that gives us the ability to offer total performance to the golfer and to give distance without compromise. Drivers okay. kind of, drivers kind of, if it was a band, right, it'd be the lead singer, wouldn't it? It's kind of the rock star, everyone's <laughs> right, back. Yeah. So um, what we're looking at, we have four key technologies here with the, uh, right throughout the range of 915. So the active recoil channel is probably visually the one that people are going to notice the okay. most. That's active recoil channel, so that's um, um, a channel that's just behind the Tough face here. Yeah. So what the active recoil channel allows us to do is is to get better active deflection of the face. Okay. Previous generations uh, of the driver, what happens is we have a, a thinner, uh, sorry, a thicker sole versus a thinner crown. All right. So we have a thin crown so that we can keep some of the weight out of high in the face to help us get center of gravity and moment of inertia positioning correct. Okay. So we want to maintain that. But what the, the trade-off was to some extent that because we're much more rigid in the sole, at impact we would get a little bit with the face. Okay. We would kind of come back so implementing the active recall channel what that allows us to do is to get deflection off both more evenly okay and what that gives us is better recall output output for better speed okay uh, the other thing that does is because you know we're not getting a little bit of deflection this way the ball is recoiling out faster mm -hmm. but it's also spinning less because of that so that technology is helping us to up speed and lower speed uh, we've also redesigned our face um, so uh, our forged insert is a little bit different now, radial speed face this time. Right, um, what we're able to do here is, is find, an op find a way to be able to thin our face a little more away from centre. Right. Anytime we bring out a, a driver, I think the big opportunity um, is to up off centre speed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all the companies now are pretty much at 8.30 COR in the centre, so we're kind of maximising on centre in terms of ball speed we can produce. It's about being able to produce that speed more across the face and get that 8.30 more often. And with the redesign of the face, the radial speed face, that's allowed us to make it a little thinner in some spots without affecting durability. And thinner makes it hotter and faster, so we're able to up ball speed. So the rest of the, the driver body is also titanium, right. a different type of titanium. Okay. So, um, so we were actually were able to, to change the titanium that we use here a little bit, um, which is a lighter uh, model of titanium, so uh, 811 titanium. Uh, and that enabled us to be able to uh, save a little bit of discretionary weight um, to be able to reach our MOI goals, so to maintain the forgiveness, which kind of is a nice segue straight into the, the third point in right. terms of our, our key technologies. Um, what we wanted to do, of course, is up, up the ball speed, lower the spin, but what we didn't want to do is compromise any of our forgiveness. Mm. It was really important to us that we maintain the, the inertia values that we have, because that's what you know our, our serious golfers demand. They demand total performance from the driver. So we had to make sure that we you know, kept our own inertia values. Now, when we go and put, you know, an active recall channel, that kind of changes the makeup of, of how it's set up. So we had to redistribute some mass within the club to do that. And that's one of the things that going to the, the 8, 811 Titanium has helped us to do. Still just as durable, okay. um, uh, lighter though. Okay. So we were able to, to get the, save a little bit of weight there and that helped us out. technology, and this is, you know, one that's been around since third generation for us is the Shore Fit Tour, but something that we still feel is an industry leading in terms of okay. adjustability. Um, so we're still able to independently adjust the loft to optimise the trajectory for the player and then independently adjust the wire to optimise their direction. Okay. And we feel that right How many configurations line, can you get? 16. 16. Okay. So four lofts, four lofts. That's about 15 too many more than, than, than I need, I think. <laughs> but uh, it's available. That's, that, that's, that's, that's right. Key, yeah. That's right. I mean, we already we think that we have a fantastic product if we right. had it without that. Um, how do we make it better for people and get it, take it to that next level of performance? We optimize it to suit them even more. For the driver, what uh, shaft options uh, come standard and what um, customized um, shaft alternatives you have? Okay, so this uh, this time around, we'll uh, have a, the new model of the Diamana series. Okay. So, uh, you know, a trusted, proven, okay. um, 
really effective method to deliver performance across a range of players with right. the Diamana white, red, and blue. Mitsubishi Rayon. Mitsubishi Rayon Diamana, so, yeah, that's correct. So, um, again, we'll have a, a high launch option with the red, medium launch option with the blue, okay. and the low launch option with the white, okay. and three different weight options as well. So that gives us the ability to really be able to mix and match to suit, you know, mm. pretty much every player out there from a stock perspective. Mm. Okay. So, you know, great, great val uh, validation on tour for this mm. one too. Great validation locally, it's a really, really strong, mm shaft you know right throughout the region here okay. so it's something that's, that's really trusted and and for good reason it's a really premium high quality product so we're really happy to have that again and i think you know pr the premium shaft that it is it also offers a lot of value so in the club as a stock so, shaft and we also yeah. have another one which you might have noticed you know, yeah i'm just going to see <laughs> stands out a little more especially yeah, being, being white so we do have the speeder 652 so okay we're really excited to offer as this. a fujikura yeah so right. really you know the speeder in terms of golf shafts is probably a pretty famous Certainly. shaft Absolutely. you know with the 757 and and fujikura you know have um re-released it with, with newer technology mm. um, and so we have, this is part of, of the same family. Okay. So this is uh, one, the 652 is, is one that will be only available throughout Southeast Asia, China okay. and Korea. Okay. So um, something that's pretty exclusive to this okay. region. Um, we'll be looking at a low, uh, sorry, a medium flight with this one, just a little bit lower than the Diamond Blue and a little bit lower torque. Now, you know, that's probably an area where we're gonna see a lot of players. So we like to be able to have two performance option there for players and two, two few options. So, the great thing about both these shafts is that we'll be the first to offer these out in the market. Nobody really? else will have these okay. out yet. So it keeps us, you know, as well as being at the forefront of, of head technology, you know, keeping us right out in front of shaft technology. Hang on, you have to, the fairway woods as well, I see. We do. Yeah, okay. so, um, you know, equally excited about these guys. Um, and, it, and a lot really of the... Really handsome looking club, this one. Yeah, they are. Very classic look. Okay. Um, and a little bit different in terms of the technologies that were used here, but drafting from a lot of the same things from driver. A little bit different uh, in terms of the face that we used on this one. Okay. Uh, this time around, previously we've had the variable face technology here. What we found with um, the implementation of the active recoil channel is that we were actually, that was taking a little bit of a stress off the face for us. So that allowed us to, to thin the face out mm -hmm. without affecting durability. And so now we have a uniformly thin face that's going to make it, uh, you know, faster across the face. And that's where the active recoil channel and the and the ultra thin face work perfectly together, as you know, the radial speed face does with the drivers. They complement each other, so they're both helping to up speed right across the face. And the good thing here is we don't have CLI to contend with. Okay. So well, we still do, of course, yeah. but we've got more room. So, so we're able to make some, you know. Yeah. We've got more room to get up to that, so it's a little bit of a different positioning for the active recoil. Okay. And I see the um, the weight is moved closer to the club face as well. It is, it is. So because this is a different tool, we need to design it a little bit differently to what we do with the fairway. Uh, sorry, with the driver. So yeah, the, the channel is a little bit of a different uh, geometry. It's a little different in size, a little different in positioning, and the weight's a little different. Okay. What that allows us to do to not only maximise the active recoil channel, but the positioning of both those helps us to reach our centre of gravity and moment of inertia goal right in the lowest part of the club there and that really helps us to be able to pull CG down low and that helps us to you know be able to maximize our launch. And to wrap things up with the range the um, now on 5H. Yeah so we have Beautiful the... Beautiful looking club. It is, it is. So we, we have not just the H but the HD as well. HD so as well. For the HD has only been a custom option previously and it will be offered as a stock option this okay. time around. What's the difference between the HD and the H? The H and the HD a little bit different visually. All the right. HD is a little smaller a little small. and a little lower in flight. Okay. Similar to what we have with our F, our FD is a little smaller and a little okay. lower in flight. Our D3 is a little lower, a little lower in flight as well. So obviously going a little smaller, we do give up uh, a little bit of forgiveness, but still extremely forgiving and just a little bit more workability and a different flight option with these guys. So again, a little bit, a little bit different from the. So it's still got an active uh, control channel. Yeah. Yeah, the active recoil channel there. Recall we still, channel, we sorry. still have that one. Okay. Um, again, a little bit different. Drafting off from the three wood, probably yeah. more heavily than the driver. Um, mm. It's a more similar club, but. In terms of what we wanted to do here, in terms of the spin, um, the active recoil channel obviously reduces spin as well as speed. What we're able to do here, we didn't want to reduce spin too much because it's really important that our hybrids remain gapping solutions that we can stop them on the green. Yeah. So what that allowed us to do is actually, you know, 
add add even more forgiveness to these while upping speed and still dropping spin a little bit. Okay. So a really big advancement with the hybrids, a little bit of a change in shape, and I think you know right across the line we're we're really excited about getting these into people's hands because uh, testing has been has been fantastic to take up on tour and, and tour validation has been excellent. As well. If you do want to optimise your clubs to the to the ultimate, fitting is the right way to go. And as we said before, we think that we have fantastic golf clubs, and the way that we can make them better is through through fitting and make sure that everything's exactly right for you. All those little one two percent things, you know, they can add up to quite a bit in the end, and that's how we get total performance. Okay, great. Sounds really exciting. Really looking forward to hitting them on the range and on the golf course. Congratulations once again, Gene. Thanks, Gene. Exciting looking clubs. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks. I'm Ju Kuang, this is for Golf Digest Singapore. Thank you.